economic precision in Oxfordshire. Um, and Mike, you guys, you guys are in a, a really niche area for some interesting engineering. What happens around here? So we're fortunate to be in an area where there's quite a lot of space activity, scientific research, companies needing small batches and prototype. That's our bread and butter. Yeah, and you've got some example components of what you make for, for the, the, the scientific companies around here. What are they and where do they go? So some of them complex, some of them not so complex. Uh, three plus two part here, which we're trying to produce in one hit, which this we are. Uh, this is for an electronics housing for a satellite. Here, aluminium, another uh, satellite component. This with a parabolic surface. This is for focusing a signal into a detector. Sorry, the science is slightly over my head. So. Yeah, but still amazing components, lots of precision, form tolerance required, some micro machining, some really small features as well. Yeah, we're always getting H7 tolerances across parts so that they can align these things correctly and so that they can achieve the science that they're looking to do. Yeah, absolutely amazing components. And you make all of these on one machine, which one is it? So the VMX30 behind us here, uh, this, we've got the table on here, the Kitgower table. We chose this machine because of the extra Z travel, whereas over the standard machine, which allows us to make a relatively long part, um, slightly limited on the diameter, but we complement that with the U-type machine that we've got next door. Yeah, and what is it about this machine that you love for producing stuff like this parabolic mirror, the all-in-one tabbed components? So I'm sure anyone who's familiar with subcontract machine, it's all about the speed you can get the part onto the machine. So we love the soft keys for probing, tool setting. It's all just making our life easier and getting parts out the door quicker. And when you've got lots of different materials, like a spindle speed is a consideration, tool changeover is a consideration, how do you know that you can produce these components to the right quality when you've got such different material? So we have a standardized tool library that we have across all of our machines. This will be for mostly for aluminium, but then we switch some in for stainlesses and tougher materials. But that allows us to put parts across a range of machines. If the, we get repeat work and we get that part back and the machine that we made it on in the first place wasn't available, we know that we can put it on another machine with minimal intervention to get that part running and out the door. Yeah, and what's really beautiful about these five axis machines from Herco, I guess, is um, they're not just two plus two, it's not just an indexing uh, axis. You can do a lot of other stuff as well with it, can't you? Yeah, so we don't see an awful lot of simultaneous work, but the Kitagawa table, simultaneous capable, the controls, simultaneous capable. It's basically like a U machine, but just with a slightly different set of travels. Yeah, brilliant. And when it comes to producing the component, the, the part programs, how do you do it and how does the control help you run those programs when they're quite complex? Yeah, so we're, we're programming offline. We're not programming at the control. It's dead easy loading programs in, simulation. We know that when we're simulating on the machine, it's looking at the actual tool path and the tool library so that we can try and catch any potential collisions or mistakes in programming before the parts cut. Brilliant, so that's the VMX30i from Herco, here making loads of complex components in atomic precision in Oxfordshire.